everybody we're going to be going over uh, the hydraulic cylinder rebuild for a 4100 uh, tractor john deere tractor with the 410 loader first before anything you want to make sure that the there's no pressure in the hydraulic lines so that when you disconnect this you don't have hydraulic fluid shoot out at you um, and you do that by obviously having the tractor off and you move the knob around just to make sure you get all the pressure out of the lines um, once you got all the pressure out of the lines, then you can start disassembling and taking parts off. After making sure you don't have any pressure in the lines, you need to go ahead and disconnect your hoses or your lines that connect to the hydraulic cylinder. Another important thing is to label them. I made sure to label them so that when it's time to put everything back together, everything goes to its appropriate uh, hose or line. So disconnect both of these hoses, one right below the other, right there. Once you have the cylinder off, then you can take it off from right there. So first, before anything, we're gonna twist that off to try to get that wire out. I'm gonna, it's kind of hard to see where the wire goes here, but there's a little slot right there. You're gonna have to peel that off in order to be able to see the wire. If the wire is not too rusted out, then you should still be able to turn this and pull the wire out. So taking out this lock wire was actually the hardest part of the project. So I'm just going to jump forward and show you what it's supposed to look like. The difficulty is going to depend on how rusted out and seized up it is into the groove. Uh, if it is rusted and seized into the groove, then it's going to break into pieces and it's going to be a nightmare. But you can do it. I did. Now, as I suspected, I turned this gland here, but the wire inside is so rusted out that it did not twist out as it should have from that slot right there. So from this point, things get a little messy. You're gonna have to put some WD-40 in there, really loosen it up so that that wire is not tight in there. You're pretty much loosening up the wire, uh, throwing in some WD-40 in there, twisting this back and forth uh, in order to loosen up that wire inside so that when you take this cylinder off of the frame, it'll be a little less of a nightmare to pull that wire out of there. But for now, I'm gonna be doing back and forth motion with this gland right here in order to loosen up the wire inside. Now, after you've loosened it up, you should be able to turn it by hand. It's still a little stiff, but that's about as loose as you're gonna get it. <laughs> Once you have that, then you can go ahead and take the, pi take the pins off. Okay. You take the cotter pin off, pull this pin off, and you punch the other side to bring this pin out which at that point, it should come off. Just don't let it fall on the ground so it doesn't get dirty. So now that it's nice and clean, clean enough to work on, we're just gonna take off all the fittings that are on here. We got two right there, one right there, and that line right there. Okay, now that we have taken off the fittings, I have set it up because the next step is to remove this wire inside of there. All right, so things have gotten a little messier um, than the other two times that I've done this, which is good since this time I'm recording it, maybe I can give you a better advice on how to handle it. Um, I was able to pry half of the wire out. I believe this is it right here. Half of it came out, the other half is still in there. Now, as I mentioned before, that wire hooks down onto the gland from the inside. And as you turn the gland, it's supposed to bring the wire out. This is the hole where the wire is supposed to connect to. This is what I'm gonna do. I created my own little key. I guess you can call it a key. Made out of little bits and pieces that I was able to pull out from this side. 
this little thing is gonna go into the into that slot into that hole like this it's gonna go in there like that and then twist the gland so that it falls into place twist it a little more all right and now that i've put that key in there i've put it pretty flat enough for it to be able to turn and come around and push that other wire out so this is the part that was broken in there now to get that key out all you do is bring it to about a position in which you can grab it with your regular screwdriver pry it up just a little and you can see it's already loose because you just put it in there so it's not like it's going to be rusted in all right so that is nice and cleaned up now once that wire is out you just slide this out and gently you shouldn't have to uh slam it you're gonna gently you're going to gently use this as a slide hammer somebody who's super picky might tell you that's a terrible idea that's how you break it whatever if you don't want to go out look for the right tool i don't know up to you i'm gonna go ahead and show you what that looks like And that's it. All right, now that you got both those pieces taken apart, there's not much left to do on this other than clean it up. Now for this part, you still have one more thing left to unscrew, which is this nut right here. You can use the vise that I have right here or similar, whichever one you have, or you can put this back on the tractor, put the pin through it to hold it in place as you unscrew this. And uh, I'll tell you in a second what the size of this nut is. All right, so now that you have your, your uh, rod on a vise or something to hold it from turning, you're gonna use a 15 16 socket, or you could use a wrench, uh, which other, whichever, is up, whichever you prefer. And you're gonna turn it counterclockwise. And it shouldn't be too tight. The other two that I've taken off, it weren't so tight. So you just gently turn it and that's it. Once you take this nut off, the whole thing can come apart. So now that you have that nut off, now you can take off this, I believe this is called a piston, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm mistaken, okay. And then you can take off the gland, slides right out. Now you have everything taken apart. The only thing left here are two things. You're gonna clean them up and you're gonna take out all the seals. Now for the seals, I recommend going to Home Depot and pick up picking up this pick set. Now this pick set right here is gonna help, especially for seals, two seals that you have right here. You have two seals inside of there that are pretty dug in there. So this is what your seal kit is going to look like. You're gonna have it in this order. Round one, the white one with the little lip side with a little lip facing out flat side facing in second one flat side facing in like that and the second groove right there next this first seal is going to go on the outer edge on the, on the outside part right here or the orange seal right there the round seal that one's going to go on the outside you have these other two seals. This one goes first, this one goes last. I'm gonna be putting the seals into some hot water to um, get them ready for their stretching. I'm gonna be using uh, this tractor fluid to lubricate all the parts inside.
So now that the seals have heated up, I'm going to start with the seals that go on this. I'm gonna start off with a thick one. I'm gonna dry it up. I'm gonna dip it into some high guard to just grab it and put it into its place right around there. And then you wrap it around and that's it. You're gonna get your yellow seal. Um, you're also gonna wanna dip it in some high guard. You're gonna realize that it doesn't stretch very easily and it's also not exactly the right size to just slide over slide it over it's gonna end up like this it's gonna end up a little bigger than the actual groove that's fine so now the next most difficult parts are the seals that go in there now dip it in some high guard Okay, so that actually worked out. It's in. Now we're gonna put the white seal. A little bit more, just being super careful. And we're good. So now we're gonna start putting the seals on the outside. You're gonna put the black one first. Both of them are the same. The two black ones that are left are the same. Same thing, dip it in some high guard and this is the last part. Then there, same technique. Put in a piece and then you slowly like just bring it around. Put it in some high guard. So you want to put it right there. Push it into place. And this is what it should look like right here. The, you have the, your first seal right here and the other two right there. And then you have your other two in here with the lip facing out. Now you put it all back together. So first thing you put on is the gland. Now we put in our piston. The flat side goes on the outside. The part with the hole inside goes on the inside. So it goes like this. Put some uh, thread lock on this nut. Now you, you carefully are going to place this piston back into the barrel. Those holes right there need to align. You'll know you have it all the way in when you see that hole from the gland line up with a pre-cut hole on the barrel. You're going to place this end right here into that hole like that. Once you do that, you twist. Um, so you're going to hear that click. And that's it. Once you got that wire in place, then you put the adapters back into place. Okay, so now that we rebuilt the cylinders, now it's time to put it back on. So you're just going to put the same, the hoses back where they were, this steel line that goes back. You're going to attach it over there. Don't fully tighten them yet, just because you're gonna have to bleed them. And in order to do that, you have to loosen them up. Okay, so the hydraulic cylinders are rebuilt and the tractor is working good. Um, I hope I was able to help somebody out with this video. Uh, I tried to put in as much detail without extending the video too much. So hopefully uh, I was able to help somebody out out there.